What's going on, Wired Fam? Hope everybody's doing well. How's everybody doing this evening? I hope you guys are ready for another Wired Live. Got some good stuff to talk about tonight. Hope everybody's doing good. Like I said, I see some people getting on. We're going to give everybody a minute to get on before we start chit chatting, before we start talking about everything. Give everybody just a minute. Roadhouse, good to see you too. Roadhouse, hey Matt, good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for being on here. Guys, if you don't care when you get on, drop me a hello. Let me know where you're from. I always like to see how far we're reaching. I always like to be able to say hi to you guys. Hopefully you guys can hear me. We're on a new computer tonight, so hopefully you guys can hear me well. David Williams, what's going on from Virginia? Jimmy Pratt, what's going on, Jimmy? Stephen from uh, Holly Springs, North Carolina. What's going on, Stephen? Hey, everything's starting to come in. Hello, hello, Eric Greeter. What's going on? Well, my comments are starting to roll in here. It takes everything a minute to get caught up when you go live. Tom A. from Pennsylvania. Hello, hello. Johnny Coots, what's up? Charlie Ham from Texas, what's up? Jackie Jordan, what's going on, Jackie? <whistles> Juggernaut, what's going on? James Williams from Chattanooga, what's going on, James? Paul Gwynn, hello, hello. What's going on, Paul? Paul, have you got all your stuff in yet? NPR doctor, what's going on? Hello from Maryville, Tennessee. What's going on from my hometown? Hometown in the house. Gene from Athens, what's going on, Gene? Jeffrey Smith from Rogersville, Tennessee. Hello, hello. Heidi Clark. How are you, Laura, and the boys? Doing well. Actually, uh, Little Wired is upstairs trying to go to sleep, but uh, he's fighting that one. He's up there screaming and hollering. I thought, hmm, I got to go live. Shoom! <laughs> so he's up there trying to get ready for bed. John Mays, what's going on? Anyone know... Juggernaut, anyone know where I can get a, a get painted pill head jigs? Uh, yeah, absolutely. This guy right here over my shoulder. Light wire hooks can get you painted pill head jigs in any size, shape, fashion, and color you want. So lightwirehooks.com. You can give Mr. Curtis a call. Mr. Curtis Hobbs, he can hook you up. Um, I actually called Curtis. Funny story, guys. I actually called Curtis this week, and he was on vacation. So he's like, hey, man, I'm on vacation. What's up? And I was like, oh, not much, man. I said, how you doing? He said, I'm doing good. And I said, hey, I got an order for you. And he said, what do you need? I said, well, I need this certain hook. And it's one you sent me a long time ago, and you said you don't do many of them, but I like them and I want them. And I'm going to send you one back. I'm going to mail you one, and you call me when you get it. He's like, all right. So I sent it to him. Actually, I sent him. I put one jig in an envelope and mailed it to him, I think, two or three days ago. So he's probably about to get it. And I, he said, how many do you want? I said, well, I want some in a 16th. I want some in an 8th. I want some in a uh, – no. I said, I want some in a 16th, some in an 8th, some in three sixteenths, and some in a quarter. And he goes, oh, okay. Well, how many some? I said, I want 250 of each. He said, yeah, you don't ask for much, do you? <laughs> and I said, what? I said, man, I said, he said, that's going to be expensive. I said, that's okay. I said, hey, just add it to all the other crappy stuff I got, you know, the, the millions of dollars and stuff. Well, probably not millions. But anyway, the thousands of dollars worth of crappy stuff that I have, just go ahead and add it to it. You know what I'm saying? May as well. So I told him, I said, ah, I want about, I don't know, thousand jigs or something like that and he's like good lord you don't ask for much <laughs> but i say that because 
that's the kind of service you get from Mr. Curtis. You can call him and you can say, hey, I want this specific jig. Can you make it? Do you have it? Most of the time he has them, to be honest with you. But if not, he can make them for you, which is really cool. And um, actually, the ones I'm getting from him are going to be pill heads. So uh, he's going to be running some pill heads for sure. No doubt. Uh, Larry Merrick, what is up, Larry? How you doing, buddy? Long time no talk. Uh, Crappie Kev, what's up? James from Missouri. What's going on, James? Thanks, man. No problem. Anytime, buddy. Anytime. Check him out online after the live. Don't leave the live to check him out online. Just wait till after the live and then go check him out online. He's normally on here, too. He's normally on the live, so we'll see if he gets on. If he does, I'll, I'll uh, ask him when he gets on if he's got any of my jigs done yet. Um, Honest Outdoorsman, what's up from Gatlinburg, Tennessee? Uh, Raymond Snell, the best place to get jigs, no doubt. The best place to get jigs is, can't shoulder is it over, that guy right there, Mr. Lightwire Hooks. That is the best. He is the, the absolute best. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Mike, Mike, what's going on from Clarks Hill? Hello. Time for long line, and I know I'm getting excited, Mike. I can't wait. Um, I am going to be selling some rods. I've got, guys, I've got way too many rods. So I've done everything. I've done it all from spider rigging to live scoping and everything in between from floating and flying to, to slip floating to fishing laydowns to I've done it all. And one thing that I can honestly say I'll probably never do on my channel again is spider rigging. I just probably won't ever do it again. So because look, my old boat was set up for it. My new boat's not. My new Ranger's not. I'm not going to put spider rig rod holders up front eight rod holders and i just that's just i'm not gonna do it so with that being said i do have a bunch of 12 foot rods that i'm gonna be getting rid of so if anybody was interested in some 12 foot rods hit me up on facebook at uh rather wide for crappie or my personal page matt zenas and i i make a good deal on some 12 footers if for the spider riggers out there but that's probably something that i'll never do again just because um you know my boat's not set up for it anymore, and I don't want to fish that slow anymore. <laughs> so, but for those of you that do want spider rig, hit me up. Or those that are looking for some 12 footers to long line, um, hit me up because I've got a whole different long line setup that I use, and I, I just don't need a whole corner full of 12 foot rods, which I have. So, anyway, probably be posting them online sometime, probably this week, and probably get rid of them. I need to, I need to open up some space. Too many baits, too many rods, too much clutter. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, guys? It just gets to the point where it's just too much. But hit me up if you want to know what they are and, and uh, you know, go like the Facebook page, Wired for Crappie, shoot me a message um, if you want to know what they are and, and we'll get you a, a uh, price on them. Paul, about the order of the force, and I believe I'm going to go with the LVS 34. Would you be ordering the pole and battery? I'll connect soon to get it lined up. Uh, yeah, I'll order the pole and battery for you, Paul, if you want me to. Um, you know, I do have an electronics install business, which you guys know, Wired Marine Electronics. Check it out on Facebook. Hit that like, follow, watch all the cool stuff that we're installing on boats, which is really neat to see all the different products. And I've had my hands on most everything now as far as um, mounts and there are there's new mounts coming out every day but i've had my hands on everything and um had my hands in every trolling motor and every live scope screen and you know it's it's amazing how much stuff that uh you install when you when you get these boats in but um i also can get the equipment for you when you bring your boat here you don't have to buy your equipment and bring it to me you can just bring me your boat and I can get all your equipment for you and, and do the install. So, you know, we do, we are a distributor. Okay. Or I am a distributor. I say we all the time, but I am a distributor. So if you guys need anything, want anything, hit me up and we can get it. Okay. Um, always tell, always tell Curtis you need them yesterday. Okay. Always, always tell him. I need him yesterday, Curtis. Always. 
I feel like I'm really dark. It's really bright in my shop, but I feel like I'm really dark tonight. That'll help a little bit. All right. Joel Nash, what's going on, Joel? Todd Pell from Beaver Creek, Ohio. What's up? Ronnie Harris, hello. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's talk some fishing because I've said my hellos. Now let's talk some fishing. All right, so last weekend fished two different lakes. I fished uh, Mountain Hill and I fished um, Teleco, okay? Mountain Hill was better than most of the times I've been there, okay? Um I found a lot of fish. I caught a lot of fish. Uh, for anybody that asks me on here how I caught those, I'm not going to tell you because East Tennessee Crappie Club has a tournament. Not this weekend, but next weekend on Melton Hill. Is that right? Not this weekend, but next weekend. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Yes, not this weekend, but next weekend on the 18th. We are fishing Melton Hill Lake. And... There's a lot of guys on here that uh, would love for me to explain how I caught them on Melton Hill Saturday. But, no, uh, great day. Caught a lot of fish. Caught white crappie and black crappie, mostly white crappie, and just had a really, really cool day, really, really interesting time, and learned a lot, okay? Like I told you guys before, I'm constantly learning with you guys. I mean, I know the channel is to, to help elevate anglers and to help, you know, you guys become better, but it's also helped me become better. Okay. In a lot of ways. So fished a really unorthodox technique, um, last week and one that I don't normally, it's not my go-to if I will, or if you will, it's not my, it's not my go-to technique. It's not my go-to kind of areas that I look, but I found a pattern and I stuck to it and I fished, you know, half-ish the lake maybe, half to uh, maybe two-thirds of the lake and continued to find them on that pattern. And like I said, it's not one that I normally uh, normally go to. It's actually one that we've never talked about on here. So I'm looking forward to, to being able to tell you guys about that once uh, once the tournament's over uh, here in a couple of weeks. I'll be able to kind of explain how those fish set up, where those fish set up, why they were set, where they were, where they were and tell you guys kind of how I caught them and, how, and what kind of led me to even look there to begin with. So that's going to be really cool. I can't wait to, to share that. It probably won't be next week, but it'll be the following. We'll go over. We'll do the uh, Melton Hill recap after the tournament, and then we will, I will tell you guys kind of what I found. And I may not find them that way in the tournament, okay? So the tournament I may fish completely different depending on the conditions and depending on where the fish are. You know, you got to go where the fish are at if you're going to win a tournament. So – if the fish aren't where they were in practice, then, you know, we'll switch it up. We'll go do something else. But it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be really cool, and I'm looking forward to it, okay? Um, teleco, let's talk about Teleco. So Teleco on Sunday, had a guide trip on Sunday. Some uh, A couple really great guys. You guys are going to be able to see that soon because uh, we did film that. Uh, a couple up, A couple up-and-coming YouTube guys that are right here in, in our area and they're trying to do some different YouTube stuff, not necessarily just fishing, but they're doing some different stuff too. They're doing some uh, outdoor stuff, really just outdoor stuff. They're doing wildlife stuff. They're doing some fishing. They're doing a little bit of everything. So really cool to get together with those guys and kind of collab on that. But the fishing, um, the fishing on Teleco is great right now, guys. It really is. Those fish are still in their winter pattern. They really hadn't transitioned over to, um, you know, that pre-spawn pattern yet, they're still kind of set out in that winter pattern. They're deep, okay? You need to go look 30 to 40 feet of water. You need to uh, locate structure, and you'll find fish. I mean, it's pretty simple right now on Teleco. It's not difficult at all. Uh, colors that worked best for us were uh, purple and chartreuse. Uh, well, we used purple and chartreuse. We used slick. And, well, I'll just show them to you because I got them right here in the book. All right, this one, I'm going to show you last because it's a new color. And when I say new color, I mean new color really for me because I'd never used it before. And I'll kind of explain to you why I decided to use it. But all right, so there's your purple and chartreuse stump bug. Kind of looks blue on my screen. Does that look blue on y'all's screen? Or is that just my eyeballs? 
Anyway, it's purple and chartreuse. So purple and chartreuse stump bug, okay, was one that we used. May just be my computer, my computer screen. So had one guy throwing purple and chartreuse. I threw this color all day. That's slick with a purple head. So I went with a purple glitter head and slick. Okay. Crappie Kev, it looked blue. Well, it's not blue, I promise. It's purple. It is purple, but it does look blue on my screen for some reason. Ah, you know how them computers do. It is purple, I promise. Purple, purple, purple. <clears throat> All the colors actually look different on my screen tonight. I don't like this computer. We're going back to the phone next week. My colors are off. All right. Anyway, here is the bait that I wanted to use this past week. And to my surprise, caught a ton of fish on it. A ton of fish. Okay. So this is actually called Bleeding Shiner. So it's kind of silver on the bottom. Okay. Kind of silver on the bottom. And then it is black or gray, kind of a smoky, smoky gray on the top, and it's got red flake in it and black flake. So it's got like black pepper flake, flake and, and red flake in it. And again, it's called Bleeding Shiner, okay? And it's a very natural color, right? Blacks and short, or uh, excuse me, blacks and silvers are natural shad colors, right? And the reason I kind of wanted to use this bait is because when I was at the fishing show this past week or a week before, whenever it was, it's a week before, when I was at the fishing show with Bonehead, I paid attention to you guys, okay? So everybody that came to the fishing show, when they walked in the Bonehead booth, this was the first color that they picked up. Everybody. Well, not everybody. 80% of the guys that walked in the booth went to this color. And I don't know why. Or I didn't know why, but everybody went to this color first. And I'm like, why does everybody keep going to that? I've never thrown that before. I mean, I, I have them. I have one pack of them. Okay. I have one pack and I'd never thrown it before. All right. So it goes to show you guys aren't the only one that learns. I learned too. All right. And I learned because there were so many anglers drawn to that color that I thought, all right, we got to use it. We got to see what's what's up. We got to see what it's about. So, threw it on one of the rods this past weekend on Teleco, and it, it I mean, it caught just as many fish as any other color did. So, you know, now that we have live scope, you know, does color make a difference? I'm not going to sit here and tell you color makes a difference. Even without live scope, I think it's more of the contrast of the of the you know contrasting the watercolor, which I've talked to you guys about before. But you know, there's a lot of times where you just fixate on colors and you just always use those same colors, right? So for me, it's white chartreuse, purple and chartreuse, black and chartreuse, slick, slick neon, moon glow, moon dust. You know, those are the colors that I fixate on. Those are those are in my color wheel, if you will. And those are the ones that I rotate through uh, for our color water up here in East Tennessee. I rotate through those colors pretty regularly. And that's kind of the that's kind of the rotation that I stay with. Now, why is that so? Well, because if I run through that gambit of colors and I can't get a fish to bite, it's time to go home. It's time to go back to the house because they ain't gonna bite. All right, because um, that's everything from a black and chartreuse down through, you know, almost clear. Um, so it's it's about going to stand out in anything to disappearing in anything other than tap water. So, I mean, again, contrast. Right. And I'm I can contrast the water with one of those five jigs. So purple and chartreuse, black and chartreuse, white and chartreuse, slick or moon dust. Those five, I can contrast any color water that I encounter, whether it be straight mud or straight tap water. I can contrast correctly those with those five baits. And that's kind of what I run through all the time. Now, do I have 
you know, different colors? Absolutely, I do. I have a bunch of different colors. And I use them when needed, you know. But that was one color that I never really used. And seeing all those guys come in there and pick that up, I, it intrigued me. And I thought, hmm. So that's going to get added to the color wheel, okay? We're going to use that a lot more. You're going to see a lot more of that um, of that uh, bleeding shiner stump bug because it catches fish. And we'll see. We'll see if it becomes part of the color wheel or the the uh, gambit of colors that we run through, right? Oh, Ray Pratt, just seen last week's show. I think you sold Joel Nash my waypoints. <laughs> I did. He, he paid heftily for him, though. Ray, he paid, he paid very heftily for him. So if you missed last week's show, I actually had Ray's boat in the shop. We were putting some stuff on Ray's boat, and uh, I showed everybody. I said, look, guys, because Mr. Ray has has uh, got a lot of good waypoints. We'll just say that. And <laughs> Joel, said, Joel said, I'll pay for the waypoints. So me and Joel got hooked up after the show. Joel wrote me a big fat check, Ray, a big check, like one of the big ones we have for the crappie club. Okay. He wrote me a big old fat check and, uh, and I, I shared a few with him, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I had to, Ray I had to, you know, man's got to eat. So, uh, you know, appreciate you, Joel and Ray, as always appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> but no, I, I didn't share any of your waypoints with Joel. I promise. Uh, he went, he probably went and found them all himself. Gene says, that's what worked on Watts Bar today. So you fished Watts Bar today, and that bleeding shiner is good on Watts Bar too then, huh? Because it was absolutely dynamite on Teleco. I mean, they if as long as you got that jig close to them, they'd come out and whack it. So it was it was a uh, it was interesting to see and watch. And, of course, one of the guys that uh, was on our guide trip was fishing with it, but I got to watch it on live scope, and I, uh, I really liked it. Yeah. Uh, all right, so a couple things to think about coming up. We got the ACC tournament, Crappie Cove, ACC, uh, Watts Bar, the, the big crappie bash on Watts Bar is coming up. Gene, you need to get involved in that. And if you like fishing Watts Bar, you need to get – you definitely need to get hooked up with uh, with me – you can anybody on here, okay? Any of you guys that want to fish that big crappie bash, it's uh, April the 29th, okay? There'll be some flyers and stuff going out um, on my pages, on ACC's pages, on Crappie Cove's pages, uh, all over Facebook and probably everywhere else. You know, we will uh, we will get some get the word out for you guys, but it is going to be a lot of fun. Again, April 29th at a Terrace View Marina on Watts Bar. Um, I'm not exactly positive on the entry fee. I think it's like a hundred bucks or something around in there. I think that's what it was last year is like a hundred dollars and uh, that's for the boat, but you have a chance to win every hour. Okay, guys. So they weigh, you can weigh a fish every hour. The big fish of every hour wins the hour hourly pot last year was $1,250 an hour guys. So you need one fish, one bite in an hour and you can win $250 or $1,250 or more. I don't know what it'll be this year. They hadn't released the payouts yet, but I'm sure it's not going to be any less than last year. So I'm sure it'll be $1,250 at least per hour. And then I think the winner of the of the tournament, whoever had the biggest fish that day, um, was like $2,500 on top of the $1,250 that they already won. So, you know, a lot of really cool stuff going on for that tournament. Um, a lot of... Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy said the Pratt boys are boat number eleven. That's funny. Well, I'm boat number. Who knows? I'm I'm registered, but I don't know where I'm at. I'm somewhere in. I guess I'm I'm higher than number eleven because uh, all the pro staff for Crappie Cove and all that got signed up like last year. So you know that's how that goes. I guess because um, I guess I guess I'm probably number. What are you, Jimmy? Are you the first one? Am I number 10? I'm probably number 10. As long as I'm number 10 and I go out right before you and Ray, I'm good with it. <laughs> but who knows? Uh, 
uh, Larry, good question. Larry says, think you'll stick with a number two hook for those smaller slim sticks? Yes, I do. Um, I believe I'll, I'll stick with the number two for the slim stick as well. Um, yeah, I have used, I've been using a number two with them. Uh, and I, the only reason I wouldn't use a number two is if I felt like they were, in, if it was some way impeding with the action of the tail, which it does not. Um, I haven't seen that. So, yes, to answer your question, I'll still use a number two. Uh, she racing. We have a bigger motor. Not when I get done with it, you won't. <laughs> hey, you're still, you're still, your motor's still a two stroke. Those two strokes are real finicky, Ray. They're real finicky. I mean, a little bit of something in that oil system. It just, it just, you just a little bit of gunk in that oil system is all it takes, buddy. All it takes. <laughs> They're real finicky, right? Real finicky. All right. Let's see. Where are we at? Mr. Roundtree, what's going on from West Monroe, Louisiana? Scott. Hey, Matt. It was good seeing you at the show. Can you give me a call on the UT Alumni Knoxville Chapter Auction? Thank you, sir. Have a great show. Um, yes, I can. And... I have your info laying somewhere, but do me a favor, um, Scott, shoot me a message to my uh, to my Facebook and give me all your info again because I had so much stuff from that show that I'm not 100% sure where I laid it, and I'm sorry. I shouldn't. I should be ashamed of myself, but I have it somewhere, but you'd save me time if you'd message me. Wired for Crappie on Facebook, shoot me a message, Scott, and uh, – I'll, I'll hit you up. So, so what Scott's talking about, guys, is the UT alumni auction, okay? Um, we are going to give a uh, guided trip to the UT alumni, the Knoxville chapter, and we are going to auction that off. Uh, I, I'm assuming it'll probably be a silent auction. I don't really know, but uh, we'll release all that information when that time comes. But, yes, it was great talking with you as well, Scott. And uh, I believe I have your info. Actually, I believe I put it in my wallet, which has probably gotten lost or my kid has done something with it. But because my kids play with my wallet, I'll check. But just in case, shoot me uh, shoot me your info, Scott, please. Oops. All right. Um, let's see. So for those that are wondering, Larry's question about the number two hook, I use a number two hook in all of my jig heads now. I do not use a number four. A lot of guys are using a number four. I don't like a number four. I like a number two because it fits the baits that I use, the stump bug, the slim stick, and even the little mini slim stick. The number two fits them perfect. Number two comes right out in front of the tails uh, or comes right out the, the butt end of a stump bug. So... Here's a number two hook coming out of that stump bug right there. And it comes right out the butt of that stump bug, right out where the uh, where the body ends and the little pito tail begins. Comes out just perfect. And when you get it on there, your bait sits just perfect on there. Okay. So I like the number two hook. It fits those, it fits the uh, the bonehead lineup of baits the best. So if you guys are, are looking for a hook. And you're looking for, uh, you know, a lot of times you don't get a choice. A lot of times you don't get a choice. You rather have, you just have to go with whatever they put in the hook, okay? But if you get a choice, like let's say you call Mr. Curtis and you say, Mr. Curtis, I need some 16th ounce jig heads. I want round heads and I want, you know, this color and that color. And and he's going to ask you, what hook do you want, okay? And he's going to ask you for a reason because Mr. Curtis has got, you know, He's got eagle claws, he's got mustads, he's got gold, he's got red, he's got bronze, he's got, you know, gray. He's got all kinds of different hooks and, and colors and brands. So he's going to ask you what hook you want, all right? He's going to ask you what hook and what size. I go with 
anything he has available as far as color, because I don't care. I don't care if it's gold or if it's if it's bronze or if it's red or whatever. I don't care. Just give me a number two round bend. And I like a round bend for those that are wondering. Okay, just a standard round bend hook. Number two. And I prefer rather a mustad or an eagle claw. Um, that's what I prefer. Okay. That's just me. And there's going to be some guys, before I read this, there's going to be some guys that say, well, why do you want a round bend? Why not a sickle hook? Why not a sickle hook? Well, you see that round bend? It's perfectly round all the way around it. All the way around here. It's just the same radius, right? Same radius around that entire hook. I do not like a sickle hook because, and I have some right here. Some of you guys are going to get mad at me. I do not like a sickle hook because this point right here on a sickle hook, right where my fingernail is, that point right there on a sickle hook, okay, is bent past 90. Okay. That point right there is bent past 90 degrees. Okay. Right here. Right. So, what that causes is a weak point in your hook. And as crappie fishermen, we all know, okay, as a crappie fisherman, what do we fish? Structure, brush, logs, stumps, trees. We're always fishing structure, right? Docks, bridges, whatever it is you fish. All right, so... When you get hung up, because you will get hung up as a crappie fisherman, it's just going to happen. Just deal with it, okay? Part of life. Especially now that everybody's went to braid and live scope, and you're going to pull this loose, right? You're going to take your braided line, and you're going to pull it loose, and it's going to open this jig head up, okay? Or this hook up. Well, when you open that hook up, that's your stress point, that past 90 bend. Then you bend it back, okay? Next time you get hung, opens it up again. You bend it back. Next time you get hung, you open it up again. You bend it back. Eventually, it's going to snap right there where it's past 90 because that creates a weak point. That's why I don't like a – I mean, I can take a round bend, and I can bend it back and forth all day long. I can get hung. I can pop it loose. I can bend it back. I can pop it loose. I can get back. For a tournament angler, retying a jig is wasted time. Okay? It's a waste of time as a tournament angler, is is retying a jig head. So if you can keep fishing and not have to retie, there's more opportunity to put your bait in front of the fish. There's more opportunity to to catch another big fish and cull and 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 move up, right? Move your weight up. So I don't like retying if I don't have to. I don't like knowing fishing with something that I know has a weak point in it or a weak spot in it. Um, that's just me, you know. That's just me. But there's a lot of guys that really like sickle hit, sickle hooks, and you guys are going to probably chastise me when we get off this, and you're going to be like, sickle hooks are the best. You're so dumb. You don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, okie dokie. I'm just telling you what I don't like about them. Not to say they're bad hooks. I just don't like knowing that there's a weak point or there's a bend that's past 90. Okay? Does that make sense? Nobody commented on that, so I'm assuming y'all are mad at me. All right? <laughs> In your opinion, which rod is best for dock shooting? The new one-piece or the six-and-a-half two-piece? Neither. Ronnie, I like the uh, I like the six-footer for dock shooting, okay? Because the six-footer is has a little more backbone. It's not as whippy, okay? The six-and-a-half is a little whippier. It's got a little more whip to it, um, and, and I don't like a whole lot of – it's. I'm not going to call it flimsiness because it's not flimsy. It's just it's got six inches more rod, so it creates a little bit more whip. Um, and I don't necessarily like the six and a half because of that. I like the six 
for dock shooting. And I like if I was oh man, if I was going to uh I mean I honestly, and this is gonna be weird, I like the two piece for dock shooting. I mean, if I was going to if I was gonna well, if I was gonna take rods to dock shoot, it'd be the six foot two pieces. Uh, the six foot one piece is a great rod. Absolutely love the six foot one piece. It's great. But uh, for dock shooting, I do like that two piece. No doubt. And have you guys tried, while we're talking about ACCs, have you guys tried the new reel seats on the one piece? Because I do like the new reel seat on the one piece. I got one laying right here. If I can get it. Yeah, there, there we go. All right. So that's the new reel seat on the one piece. Okay. So your hand is actually, it's, it's everything from here to here is level. Okay. There's no valleys or peaks or anything in this grip. It's level. Okay. So when you have this in your hand, it feels really good because it's all one height. It's all one level. Okay. I love it. So if you look at the two piece, okay, side by side here. All right. You can see where this is not level where the real seat is, where the actual real seat is, okay? You've got all these peaks and valleys, and when you're holding this, okay, you're not, you're, it's not level in your hand, okay? So it's not level, and when you set, a lot of times when I set the hook, I don't feel like I get a good hook set because I may have, I may be, I may be feeling that jig here in my thumb and my finger, okay? And when that fish bites, when I go to set the hook and these slide back to set the hook, I almost lose grip a little bit. So I almost feel sometimes I don't get a real solid hook set because my grip actually will change. When I'm fishing, I, a lot of times when I'm fishing, I like to even have my finger out here because I can get direct contact to the rod blank and I can feel that bite a lot better when I have direct contact to the, to the rod blank. But I'll catch myself a lot of times when I get that bite, I'll pull this back in, to set the hook, and my hand position will change. When my hand position changes, a lot of times I don't feel, like I said, I don't feel like I have a great grip on it. And there's been a lot of times where when I set the hook, I feel that rod move in my hand, and I do not like that. I do not like that because I don't feel like I get a good hook set a lot of times. And you guys have seen my videos. I set the hook. I mean, I used to bass fish, so I set the hook. I still have some some of that bass hook set in me, and uh, I'm not afraid to set the hook on a crappie. And that's one thing that I will say. I will mention why I'm on the why I'm on the live tonight is because on my on our guide trip um, Sunday, there was several times where I said set the hook, jerk, 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 and I'm like jerk it hard. And I'm like. Jerk it hard, you know, because they're, they're, got him, you know, and I'm like, no, jerk, yank him, yank him. I want you to move him five feet on the screen. Just jerk him up, you know, and they're like, well, I thought they were paper mouths. Guys, crappie are paper mouth, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. Crappie have a soft mouth, but when you've got 30 or 40 or like we had this past weekend fishing 30 foot deep, 60 feet of line out, this does not do you any good. <laughs> okay. A hook set like this right here is not going to get that firm hook set, especially if you hit them in the top of the mouth. Top of the mouth and the bottom of the mouth on a crappie are hard, right? They're hard, just like any other fish. Roof of the mouth and bottom of the mouth are hard. Hook hits there and you set the hook like this. They are not going to stay pinned. Rare back and let them fish have it. I mean, just, whack, you know what I'm saying? Just, whack, just let them have it because it is not going to tear out of their mouth. Now, not with 60 feet of line out. Now, if that fish short strikes you and it's three feet down from the boat and you whack that fish, then yeah, you may tear his lips off. But I'm telling you, you thought 30, 40 foot of line out, you jerk that fish. He ain't going nowhere. 
Okay. You get that hook buried in that fish's lip. So, and uh, that was the one thing that I will say from this weekend that if I could, if I could give you a tip tonight, that would be the wired tip is don't be afraid to hook those fish. Don't be afraid to rear back on them because, uh, you know, their mouths aren't as soft as you think they are, or that paper mouth deal is, uh, is not as bad as you may think. Okay. So go ahead and rear back on them fish. That'll help you out. Oh, what jig head works best for dock shooting? Uh, I like a round jig head because I feel like it skips better. Okay. Um, it's consistent. You know, a pill head, I feel like digs. A minna head is, is slender and I feel like it digs. If I'm looking for something to skip, I want a round head. That's that's what I shoot docks with. Um, oh, let me finish my statement. I didn't finish my statement. I was talking about ah! Okay, on the new one piece, with this being with uh, with all this being one one level, there's no peaks, no valleys, no nothing. It's all level right here. A lot of times, I can hold this a lot better, and I I've got good contact here. Okay, and when I set that hook, my hand doesn't shift around as much because when I bear down to set the hook, and this is all. I mean, this isn't. Bear down, set hook, da, da, da. no, it's just nature. It's just second nature, you know, thump, mm, you know, you're putting it on them. You're putting a cattywampus mohica sneak on them, you know what I'm saying? So, again, I know it sounds crazy, but having this all one level, I, my hand doesn't shift around as much. I don't have as much, you know, missed contact with my reel or my reel seat as I do on the other ones. For that, for that alone, I mean, the real seat, for the real seat's concerned, I like the one-piece. For the backbone, I like the two-piece because the two-piece has a little bit different backbone than the one-piece. Let's face it, they have to beef up the two-piece a little bit more because it's two-piece. Because there's, a there's again, there's that weak point where that connection's made. And, well, I shouldn't use the word weak point. If they don't make sure that that connection point is stronger than there it would create a weak point right so they have to and if you guys look at a rod you can see i mean there's extra there's extra thread right here where those rods connect right so they have to beef that up a little bit because it's a two-piece rod and because they do that it gives it a little bit more backbone so i do like the two-piece for dock shooting because it has that little bit more backbone than one piece okay Yeah, Eric Reader, when they're pulling in, when they're pulling lips in, then it's too hard. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's funny. I have yet to pull in a pair of lips, okay? And you guys have seen my videos. I rear back on some fish now. I ain't afraid of it. I rear back. I let them have it. When when they get in the boat, they're going, oh, that hurt, that hurt. They talk to me when they get in the boat. I mean, that's just second nature of a crappie. They, they talk to me. You know, I'm like, I'm like crappie doolittle. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they get in the boat, talk to me, tell me how their mama is and how they're, you know, and they say, well, it, you know, it, it didn't really hurt that bad. Uh, the, the paper mouth wasn't really too much paper, but you stuck that hook right through there real quick and in a hurry, didn't you? And I said, yeah, I did. And I, I said, yeah, going back to old Papa, Papa, I'm coming for him. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, uh, I've never pulled up a pair of lips and I've flat out wear back on a few fish, okay? So you will not pull lips up or pull lips out. Crappie Kev, I wrap all my rods with wind grip tape. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I've got a partner of mine that does that as well. Um, he wraps them. Anytime he has a rod that is is not, you know, one level on the real seat, he'll wrap them too. But And then he's got some Tennessee handle stuff. Um uh, that's similar to this rod. So he's got some Tennessee handle stuff that uh, he takes these plastics off and, and wraps them in wind tape as, as well. So, uh, but I love, 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 love that Tennessee handle without a shadow of a doubt. That's a demo. They don't sell these. So don't, don't message me and say, you, you, you showed us that they don't have it. You're right. This is a, this is a prototype. Okay. Um, 
I'm not going to speak out of turn. I think they're going to produce some of these at some point. That's up to Andy and ACC whether they do or not. But I absolutely love, love, love that Tennessee handle. And if you guys love a Tennessee handle and want to see one of these, message ACC Crappie Sticks on Facebook, send them an email, something, something, and let them know you want a Tennessee handle. And that is a super grip Tennessee handle, which is so sweet. This is my tournament rod. It's mine. I mean, ain't nobody getting this. This is mine. This is my tournament rod. I fish with this rod in tournaments, and that's it because I don't want to break it. I don't want it going nowhere. I love it. It's my baby. And I've asked for more because I love, 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 love them. Um, but this is this is it right here, okay? And most of the time, everybody's going to say, well, that's not straight. Yeah, it's not. But I, I, that's why I've got my reel set back because typically I hold here, okay? Typically I'm holding up here because I put this rod right there like that on my arm. That's how I fish. I set that rod right there on my arm. It's an extension of my arm. That's it. It's an extension of my arm. And I set it right there on my arm. I hold it right here. And I'm reeling. And when that fish bites, I caddy wump us that joker. I just let him have it. Just rear back on it. And when I rear up, okay, that's why I put that rod on my arm. Because when you rear back, son, that rod's on your arm. It don't go nowhere. You straight up smack that mug right in the face. Because that rod can't go anywhere. It can't, it can't bend down. When I, snake, when I rear back on that joker, I rear back on him. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I love that thing. I'm getting excited. Look, I'm talking about hook sets. I need to go fishing. I'm getting excited about it. That's the best part. I just need to do like a hook set compilation. And I just need to pull all my good hook sets together and put them in a video and shoot them out there for you guys. And it's like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> we need to do that. All right. <laughs> Lynn. Hey, Matt, it was great speaking with you at the fishing show. I'm just getting into crappie fishing. I appreciate all the info. Love your channel. Appreciate you, Lynn. It was great talking with you as well. I appreciate you for coming by the booth. Appreciate everybody that came by the booth at the fishing show. A lot of, lot of support, a lot of love at the fishing show. Appreciate that, no doubt. Uh, like we talked about last week, I, I really was uh, honored for you guys to come out to uh, to say hello. It was really cool. So a lot of people came out, a lot of, a lot of cool conversations for sure. Uh, Pudgy the Unicorn Graves. Now, that's a name right there, guys. I'm just going to throw that out there. We're going to leave it at that. Pudgy the Unicorn Graves. No more needs to be said. That's that's awesome. All right. Do you prefer mono or braid? Thanks, Sean. So, Sean, dock shooting, I like mono. Okay? Anything else other than dock shooting, braid. That's me. That's where I go to. Joel Nash, you just created a good nickname for yourself. Thank you. What 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 did I what what, what was it? You're gonna have to I said a lot of crazy stuff tonight, so you're gonna have to elaborate on that because I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, Joel. You talk about the Caddy Wampus Mohica Snake. That's what you're talking about. Chris, checking in from Central Mississippi. What's going on, Chris? Look at that slab, guys. What is up, big old, big old black crappie? Jackie. Joel, I thought I was watching Richard Jean. Oh, my gosh. Hey, uh, I love old Richard Jean, but I can't watch him anymore. He, he's out there, boy, I tell you. Uh, Richard's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I don't have quite the following that he does, Jackie. I think Richard's got me beat by about what? Several hundred thousand, maybe? <laughs> Richard's big time. Everybody likes Richard Gene. The fishing machine. Just It just goes good together. Joel Nash, Crappie Doolittle. Yeah, that's right. He called me Crappie Doolittle. I talked to him. We have good conversations. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, let's see. Did I miss one? Where'd my I like I got lost, guys? Hang on. I get lost about twice a night. This is only once tonight. I gotta find my spot here. Uh, 
Well. All right, there we go. All right, so again, uh, that's rods. That's what I like. Six, six and a half is pretty much all that I use. I mean, I do use eight footers. Um, I do use eight footers to uh, live bait fish, and I do use a ten footer from time to time to to live bait fish and to uh, vertical jig with. I'll use a ten footer to vertical jig, and then I use so my trolling rods. Let's talk about my trolling setup. So I got two 12 foot ACCs, two 10 foot ACCs, two eight foot ACCs, and then I use two of my six and a halfs or two of my sixes, one of the two, straight out the back of the boat. Uh, so that's my that's my long lining and or crank baiting and or um, planer boarding. Okay, so whether I'm pulling planer boards, long line trolling, or pulling crank baits, I still use that same setup. That's the beauty of the ACC rod is. You know, you can do everything with one set of rods. You don't have to have four different sets of rods like we used to, um, to, you know, do everything with. All right. So very versatile, very good rod. Um, I haven't pulled anything with the one piece yet. Long line and obviously you could pull with them, but I, I hadn't pulled any planer boards or, or pulled any crankbaits with the one piece rod yet. And everything I've used is the two piece. Um, James, what pole do you have live scope on? So my live scope pole is a fishing specialties pole. Um, it's a 48 inch down rod with an 18 inch uh, extendable handle. So the handle is extendable. So you can slide it in or pull it out depending on your boat. You know, some guys leave it, leave it pushed in the handle and some guys extend it out. I always extend mine out. Um, I've had mine for so long that my handle is actually fixed. It's not extendable. Um, I have an 18 inch fixed handle, but the new handle is, um, uh, extendable. It extends out. It's really, really great pole. Um, for the money, you can't beat it. Um, there are a lot of different poles out there, guys. Um, and some have different features than others. Some are good. Some are bad. My opinion. But for me, the simplicity of the of the fishing specialties pole, the lightweight of the fishing specialties pole, and the durability of the pole are second to none for me. Uh, you know, they're it's easy to deploy, easy to stow, sits right in the cradle, no thumb screws. You don't have to put a thumb screw, you know, you don't have to screw unscrew anything, screw anything down. I mean, it's just Set it in and forget it. Pull it out and forget it. I mean, it's pretty simple. And if you want to, James, if you want to save some money on that live scope pole, right there, 10% off fishingspecialties.com code is wired. All those discount codes down there, guys, are for you all, for you all to save some money uh, on any of your products that you may buy from Stowaway or Fishing Specialties or Bonehead or Crappie Cove. Uh, you can save yourself some money with those codes down there. So take advantage of those codes, guys, because they're there for you. Chris, I've got to get my casting game a tune-up. Mostly here, vertical jig timber with 12 to 16-foot poles. I do love casting those. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is is you guys, where would you say you were? Mississippi. I mean, you know, Chris in Mississippi, you guys have muddy water. I mean, you can get right up on those fish and they don't spook. I mean, we have crystal clear water here in a lot of our lakes. And I'm when I say crystal clear, like Teleco, when it hadn't rained in a week or two, you fill your live well up with Teleco water and you can't even tell there's water in it. Okay. You open your you open your live well up and it's just like, is there did I not fill it? Oh, oh, there's water in there. Okay. And you shut the lid back down. You know, so we can't we don't have the luxury in East Tennessee of getting right up on those fish with a 12 or 16 foot pole. If you brought a 12 foot pole up here to fish out of my boat, you'd never catch a fish. Okay. Unless we, unless we fish structure, let me go back. Let me digress. All right. Fish on structure guys. I don't want anybody to be like, I catch them on 12 foot pole vertical jigging all the time. Fish on structure will stay there. Okay. Fish on structure typically will stay a little longer than fish not on structure, okay? I'm talking open water fish. Open water fish, 
you're not going to get 12 foot from an open water fish unless that fish is asleep or half dead. You ain't getting 12 foot from an open water fish on a good day. Now, if it's rained two weeks like it has in the last two weeks, if it's rained for two weeks straight, you might be able to get that close to them. But on the normal, you're not getting that close up here, Chris, to, to a fish. So with that said, you know, we have to cast to them, the open water stuff. And even the fish that are sitting on over top of a brush pile, if they're sitting over top of a brush pile, you know, four or five foot on top of it, you're not going to get, you're not going to get 12 foot from them. You're not. They're going to run. Now, if they're on brush, they'll typically stay. Sometimes you will flush a, a, brush, a brush pile. Um, sometimes you will flush that brush pile and they'll be gone. But for the most part, you can get on them on brush. But yeah, it, it's it's a different game. And, you know, you guys need to keep that in mind when y'all watch a lot of these YouTubers. You know, when you watch a YouTube channel and you follow a YouTube channel and you, you know, make sure that those guys are talking about not just their lake, okay? I tell you guys about my lakes, but also when we're talking and I'm answering questions, I try to relate myself to you guys where you're at more so than I do just tell you about my lake, right? So you got to make sure when you're watching some of these YouTube channels, you're watching some of these guys, they're giving you information that's going to be productive for the water you fish, okay? Because, uh, Chris, if I told you, go get you a, a moon dust stump bug and go down to Mississippi on Grenada and, and you know, put a, a, a silver head on it and drop that moon dust stump bug, you know, five feet from a fish and it'll whack it, that's probably not going to happen. Now, if you hit that fish in the face, he might eat it, but... He's probably, you're probably not going to catch anything on a moon dust stump bug on Grenada. Uh, am I lying? I mean, am I right? If, if, if I give you, well, well, that's a horse of a different color. If I give you this bait right here, which is a uh, uh, slick stump bug, and I tell you, put that in front of a fish on Grenada and catch one, it's going to be a little difficult, right? Now, if I give you that orange and chartreuse stump bug, it's right above my finger there. You might be able to do a little something, something with that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe able to go whack a, you know, go whack a big three pounder, but you're not going to do it. So again, I say that because you need to think about your body of water and relate to your body of water, your clarities, your, you know, conditions, not just listen to somebody tell you, go buy a black and chartreuse stump bug and you'll catch fish. Now, that was probably a bad analogy because black and chartreuse works in any color water. But you get what I'm saying, okay, guys? You got to relate to where you're at. And that's another reason that I like learning where you guys are at, it, you know, geographically. Because when you ask me questions, like Chris, you told me you were from Mississippi, so I was able to relate to your bodies of water. I don't know everybody's body of water, but I know Mississippi. And it's dirty. You know what I'm saying? You, Eric, do you have a bracket for each side of your boat? Yes. I have a fishing specialties bracket for each side of my boat. Okay. Now, somebody's going to say, why do you need one for each side? Can't you turn that pole around and look underneath the boat? Yes, you can. But have you ever tried to turn a pole around on this side of the boat? and cast to a brush pile on this side of the boat, it's a little hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a little tough. All right. So I like to be able to have my pole right in front of me, my screen right in front of me. And I like, if I'm fishing out of the left side of the boat, I like to be right here, right here, and right here, and have it right there in front of me and be a cast in right here in between the two. All right. Now, if I'm fishing out the other side of the boat, I like to have my pole right here, my live scope right here, and I like to cast right here. All right? I don't want to have a pole here, a live scope here, and casting over there. You see what I'm saying? A little difficult. Now, it's going to cost you an extra $100 to put them out on the other side of the boat. Some guys are like, I'm not spending an extra $100 for that. Cool. You don't have to. That's just what I like. That's just why I do that. Okay? 
Now, another reason I do it is because if I'm fishing a dock or I'm fishing, you know, a brush pile and I have to get on one side of it or the other because of current or because of whatever. I mean, docks are fixed. I mean, I can't necessarily get on the other side of a dock. So depending on which way the wind's blowing or the current's coming, I want to have that pole on the same side as the dock. All right. So that's kind of why I do that. That's kind of why I have both. But yes, I have a bracket for that lot for that fishing specialties pole on both sides of my boat. Uh, secondary question to Eric is the secondary bracket necessary visibility difference with one fishing specialties down rod of shooting across the boat. So, okay. So Barry, I hope that answers your question. I didn't see that before, but I'm glad I answered it. So, you know, uh, again, you know, that's why I have one for both sides of the boat because it is a little bit more cantankerous to try to have a live scope here, a pole right here, and then try to cast over here because you can't, I mean, if you're, if you're looking right here at your live scope screen, you can't cast over here and, and watch your jig. So you're, you know, it's nice to have live scope, pole, make your cast, you can watch it. You're right here. Your, your workstation is in front of you instead of having a workstation that's behind you. All right, Chris, our water is clear. Oh, uh, we talked about that one. I answered that one. Hi, right, got another one. Our lakes are considerably dirtier. Yes, they are. Putting the boat on or put the bait on their nose is vital most times. I do match the natural forage most times, but sometimes it's got to be a wild color too. Clear equals chocolate soup. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's bad down there. I mean, you guys are fishing in like coffee, which speaking of coffee, this is nine o'clock coffee tonight. Okay. You got to stay awake somehow. Actually, it's 10 o'clock coffee. All righty. All right, guys, we've been on for a little over an hour, which is a little more than normal. We normally stay on for an hour. So we're two minutes, three minutes over now. So we're going to call it a night. Uh, I appreciate everything you guys do. As always, if I did not answer your question tonight, Feel free to hit me up on any of my 50 million social media pages, okay? Instagram, Facebook, you know, Wired for Crappie, Wired Marine Electronics, Matt Zenis, hit them all, you know. I'll answer somewhere. Info at Wired for Crappie dot, or info at Wired for Crappie dot com is my, uh, is my email. If anybody wants to hit me up in an email, uh, or you can go to Wired for Crappie dot com, and that's the website, and there's a contact me on there. You can do all that good business and figure out how to get in touch with me. But as always, guys, I appreciate everything that you guys do because without you, I wouldn't even be here. All right. You guys hear that on every YouTuber's channel that you go to, but I do appreciate you guys. That's why I do what I do and try to teach you guys and help you guys and answer questions and grow everybody in their crappie fishing walk, if you will. Um, that's what it's all about. And that's what I'm here for. So if you like the content, smash that thumbs up. Uh, make sure you subscribe. If you have not subscribed, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you get notified about everything, the videos, the shorts, the lives, all that good stuff. Got some more shorts coming for you, some really cool stuff. Got more videos coming out for you. We got to finish up the series 9 and 10. Those are getting ready to drop. Well, 9 is getting ready to drop um, and then 10. But uh, as always, God bless. I appreciate you guys so, so, so much. I hope you all have a great week. We'll be back next Wednesday, same time, same place. And as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all have a good night. We'll catch you on the next one.